Gaming can be an expensive hobby, and getting a job can feel like it might enable it, but not necessarily. Jobs take up a lot of time, and unfortunately, they're really necessary. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things only gamers with jobs will understand. Starting off at number 10, finally finding time to game, but having that nagging feeling you should be doing anything else. Like, you know what we're talking about here. Anyone who is an adult and into gaming has dealt with this feeling in some way. You get a little free time to game, you push everything aside, shut off the cell phone, close the emails, sit at the loading screen for a few seconds and think, wow, I'm wasting my time. Right about the time the guilt almost overwhelms you, the game starts, you're playing it, you get it about 30 minutes, and then the task-oriented nature of, let's say, some open world game that you've decided to start reminds you of all of the things in real life we might also call tasks. You start thinking about an abstract quest screen that says things like, zero the emails, project due Thursday, etc. Be in factory. I don't know what you would call that quest if you work in a factory. Stand in assembly line, I guess. Then you start thinking about things around the house you could be doing. Garage doors maybe making a weird sound. Microwave isn't spinning right. Got some unread texts. Never know what that's going to be. And if you're a parent with a job, that means you're a person with two jobs trying to game. Anytime you're not helping out your kid, you're just kind of feeling lazy. Now, this doesn't make you a bad parent, but you're sometimes going to feel like a bad parent. And nobody wants that. So when you got responsibilities other than gaming, it can be like super overwhelming. But you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta remember like everyone's entitled to some free time to just sit and relax. That said, gaming can also be its own special kind of commitment itself. Moving on to number nine, like having a large digital game collection and only being able to play a fraction of it. Like Steam is this unending collection of games that tends to grow because there tends to be great sales on a fairly regular basis. We all know this. That library can balloon like crazy. I have a, an absolute ton of games on there. Let me just put it this way. My job is playing games and I have this same problem. Tons of these things are unplayed or like 5% completed. I was able to play it for like maybe an hour or two, either collectively or one day I just felt particularly saucy. I don't know, it's one or the other. But like, it's the ultimate paradox. You have a job, you have money, you have the games but you aren't playing them because you don't have the time because you have to keep getting that money. I don't know, you gotta like pay for your house and groceries and stuff, I guess. You can't just stop working and play the games. <laughs> And number eight, and this is probably a lot of people and extends maybe even a little bit past the gamers with jobs demographic we've set up here, but I'm going to say that it hits people with jobs the hardest. So let's say there's a new multiplayer game. It's getting tons of hype. People are talking about it nonstop and you're just like, okay, this looks like it's for me. I want to try it. You jump in and you realize that regardless about the amount of time that this game has come out, there are people who have had infinitely more time to practice this game than you because you have not had any time to practice it. And whether it's been five hours since the game came out, five days, five weeks, somebody's played it the whole time and it's way better than you. Like, you can't play a game over the weekend because the job was like, you gotta come in on Saturday and Sunday this week. So you're stuck looking at like a wall of candy bars as you're manning a cash register while everyone is becoming an expert at this game you really want to play. Then on Monday, you pop in and you don't stand a chance. And number seven, not being able to play games for long periods of time because of work. And this extends past the multiplayer games, obviously. So let's say you work weird hours, or you work weekends, and you don't really get a lot of free time. Or like, let's say you work on a fishing boat in the Arctic. You're gone for months at a time. Or like the military, same thing. There's tons of downtime. You can be a gamer in the downtime, but let's say you get deployed. You're gonna be like somewhere for months on end and you're definitely not going to have a chance to play video games in the capacity that you would in civilian life at all, period. Or let's say you're a lawyer and you get a case and it's really tough 
and you got to spend all of your time on this case. You leave the office, you come home, and you're reading the lawyer stuff with the Chinese boxes because that's what lawyers do, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I'm hung up on that. It's possible I just want some Chinese food. And number six. Oh, having to sacrifice either gaming or your social life. There is only so much time in a day, and when you're at a nine to five, five is when you get off of the day. Most games require several hours of commitment. In the end, it might kind of be a little cheaper to be a gamer, even though games cost a lot of money than somebody with a robust social life. Uh, like, you're not gonna waste as many like of those hard-earned dollars on an overpriced cocktail somewhere, pretending that you need that in order to be around people. Like, you finally get time to game and suddenly your quote-unquote friends want to hang out or you've got a quote-unquote date with a quote-unquote significant other who wants to actually spend time with you. <sighs> it's a good idea to try to be with people who share interests so you could hang out playing games. It's difficult, though. Not everybody wants to spend three hours on Thursday night playing the new game. Some friends want to hang out. You just want to finally game already. And number five, playing late and falling asleep while gaming. Sleep, the biggest sacrifice a working gamer must make. We've talked many times about the dreaded decision that comes around at midnight, then again at two, then again at three, and at four, and at five. Do you keep gaming? Is it time for sleep? Is the sleep worth it at this point? Either way, you're gonna feel it the next day and work is gonna be miserable. It's basically unsustainable and something a, a young person is kind of the only kind of person that can get away with it. You get older and you you do a lot more falling asleep while gaming than all night gaming, especially if you get yourself comfortable on the couch playing with like a headset in and holding the controller leaning back. I have fallen asleep many a time in the middle of a game doing this. And the reason it's even in the cards is like, let's say it's a work night, but for some miraculous reason, all your game friends are online and you want to play the same multiplayer game. You get wrapped up in it and then you fall asleep in the middle of it. And everybody gets mad at you, but it doesn't matter because you're off in dreamland. At number four, having to plan your gaming time around completely arbitrary release times. Like, all right, so this is especially bad when you take a day out for a game only to find out that it's not coming out until like noon or six or even 11. Instead of coming out at midnight on the previous day, like, you know, everything should. Like, what's the point of that? So like now one of your days off is just wasted. Y you got all these hours sitting around waiting, can't do anything. So, bleh. Or let's say you're stuck at work and it did come out at midnight the previous night. So you're just at work thinking about that game the whole day. And then you get home and even if it's preloaded, it has this huge 30 gigabyte day one patch. So that eats out a bunch of your day as well. That's fun. It's great. It's lovely. I, I think that there should just be standard release times. You put a game out at midnight if you're like above a threshold in terms of level of developer. I think once you're like a quote unquote double A developer, maybe that's 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 the cutoff. You got to release it at midnight. And number three, let's say you build the ultimate gaming PC and you mainly use it for working. Now, I don't want to sit here and talk about all of the things that you could be using your PC for for work. I mean, there's PowerPoints, there's spreadsheets, there's, I don't know, AutoCAD and Illustrator, I guess. I don't know. There's like a limitless number of things you could be stuck doing on your computer other than gaming. And that's what you're stuck doing on your computer, not gaming, working. And you're just thinking about that killer graphics card with all the LEDs on the inside with the glass on the side so you can see everything going. You're looking at it while you're making a PowerPoint about sales figures. Oh, look at that beautiful neon light. Look at that fan whirring. Look at all that machinery doing nothing. And number two, when your gaming time goes too fast and your working time goes too slow. I like to call this time dilation. It's not, a, I think, a real thing. It's more of a perception issue that I think human beings have. And also birds of prey who play video games like myself. Remember, I am a bird. But like you play games at night and you just watch the time melt away. You start at like 8 p.m. and suddenly it's 3 a.m. And you're like, wow, what happened? And then you wake up the next 
next day and you go to work and you're like, surely time has passed. I've been here since 9 a.m. And oh my God, it's 9.30 a.m. It is not near lunchtime. I am hungry. I'm not just hungry for games. I'm hungry for food. Oh, this day sucks. And number one, finally, when you don't have a job, you desperately need one to play games. And when you have a job, you don't have time to play games. This is the paradox. We've indicated this a little bit throughout here, but that's the whole thing. When you're a kid, you wish you had a job to afford games. When you're an adult, you wish you were a kid so you had time to play games. Also, so that your body doesn't hurt all day, every day. I did this thing in high school where I'd just not eat lunch, and I would save up lunch money to buy video games. It felt really clever. I don't know if you can still do that anymore, because I think lunch is either free or you pay into like an account at school now. I don't know. Stuff's gotten super weird, but you used to be able to do that. A couple of real quick bonus ones for you. Uh, turn on the Xbox or the PlayStation or whatever with the intention of playing something, and then you end up just watching a bunch of streaming video because that app is there. Or like, let's say you watch a bunch of people playing games on Twitch or something rather than actually playing them yourself. Then there's another one that like, I don't know that affects everyone but like let's say you start up an open world game and you don't bother with the story you just sort of dick around in the open world you like wander around in it for a few hours and that's the game for you or hell just like only playing multiplayer games because a single player game is such a time commitment because the point is like immersion and story and progression and all this whereas a multiplayer game like you kind of just got to be good at it and the other stuff wraps up into that yeah i mean gaming as an adult with a job can be a test of will let's say anyways that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see the newest ones is to subscribe click the notification bell and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks